you know, it's kind of weird. I'm at Echo Lake. I just bumped into a guy who just told me he saw a Sasquatch. <laughs> this is twice I've been here where I've bumped into people that said they saw a Sasquatch. But the weird thing is, I was just down the road filming some loons, and as I was filming, I heard this, but really loud. And then I stopped here to check out this lake behind me. I heard another large whack. So I'm going to try something. I'm going to drive up and down the road here a little bit. I'll leave my window down and I'll stop my car and I'll see if I hear another whack. But I can put my audio recorder on. It's just weird. Same sound, three kilometers apart. I'll try to get it recorded though, because it's not gonna mean anything to you guys. I just heard a third knock, but it was down the road, so I moved my vehicle up the road more. And then I heard a farther, uh, another knock. So I moved up just a wee bit, but I have to shut up. It's kind of weird though because they're on the south side of the, of the valley instead of the north side. Okay, I'll leave my audio recorder on. And I, I do want to get over here, though, up top there. I don't know if you can see that with all the smoke anyways, but... You know, I'm the last guy to you know, read into anything. And I don't, don't want to read into anything. And I'll tell you, I just heard another knock. I'm on the north side of the valley. No. But when you hear them, you hear them. Like they're not like a twig or anything like that. Like it's, I was just chucking a large rock at a, a big trunk of a tree here. And then I tried uh, smacking a big rock onto another rock. <sighs> That's four. I don't know. I haven't come across any. Um, I haven't come across any prints yet. But I haven't come across any bear prints. I haven't come across any cougar prints. Uh, I haven't come across any rabbit prints. I've come across elk, deer cow and, uh, and that's it but when you hear the knocks you hear the, you hear them they're distinct they're not they're not little piddly things that's for sure and again it's only one knock it's almost like as soon as you come into the area and you stop your vehicle they knock one time that's happened to me four times now it's got nothing to do with my vehicle <laughs> this knock was that direction heading towards echo lake again i don't know just an observation all right
I just stopped in to uh, Echo Lake Resort and uh, talked to Ward and uh, told him what I was doing here and stuff and they, they were full solid. I've had pretty good luck with the resorts in the area. Uh, as mentioned, uh, uh, Harold and Kim, they said, well, yeah, Leon, you can stay at our area there if, uh, if you're doing squatches and let us know what you're kind of finding and stuff like that. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then I come down to here to Echo Lake Lodge Resort, and they're book solid. Talk to Ward a bit, tell him what I'm doing. And then he says, uh, you and I should get together and talk. We've got a lot of reports about Bigfoot in the area. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> mentioning earlier, that's three. So anyways, he's, there's a permanent site people, that, but they're not showing up till Friday. Annuals. So he gave me their spot. So that was pretty nice of the guy, for sure. I'll keep you guys updated. I'm going to take you over to an area. Heidi uh, found some interesting things. She's not a squatcher or anything like that, but she's a bush person and she has some thoughts and some stuff. So uh, I'm going to buzz over there and see uh, uh, what she wants to show me. And it's supposed to be pretty interesting. So, I went back and talked to uh, Warden, and uh, he had said that, he had said that he had talked to one of the old timers in the area, and that he was a trapper. And that he found Prince, saw a Sasquatch. And this is in the area here again. Now I'm going to just turn this around so you guys can see what I'm looking at here. And that's this right here. Now, the question is is it man made or did a Squatch build it? So it's always good to get, remember those four things I talked about, you need to be a healthy skeptic and you need to use critical thinking and you also need to uh, form a hypothesis now first thing you'll notice there's all this bark that's on here, the thing you'll notice is there's a seeding stump also notice these on the ground here and so when I talked to Harold again this would look like a squatch structure look at the rocks though around the perimeter Harold's affair is, a, uh, is fairly mature meaning he's about probably around 65 years old and his family ra were raised here so I asked him about these structures and he said yeah my kids made those They've been there for a long time, was his words. But again, you can just see all the barks and that on it. So, just something to keep in mind. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's no squatches in the area, because like I said, that's three people now I've come across. Four if you count uh, Warden, because he says he's been hearing some pretty freaky vocals, or he's heard pretty freaky vocals in the area. So, and uh, I let him listen to one of the vocals, not from here, but from another area. And uh, he says, "Yeah, I've heard that here before." Uh, and it's a long howl, Ooh, that kind of a sound. And I look behind me. Look at that. The nice thing is, a, it's open area. Because usually I just don't have open area like this to walk in. Uh, but B, I can get right up to the crest, or right at the base of that mountain behind me. That goes straight up. Because I want to look for a sign up there. I'm going to put a recorder up here too. Okay, so here's something else I want to show you. So again... Is that Sasquatch? Got 
that Carrie and one of the other girls were with us. Oops. Over on the right side over here in case you hear them talk. This is just a really small lake to my left. But again, a lot of people would be ecstatic and go, oh, look at this, this is a Bigfoot structure. But I'll show you the signs that it's not. Plus the information the locals say that it's been here for a long time. I just want to point out this right here. See how this looks like a roadway? There's a side here, side here. That one's been kicked out of place. Comes all the way down here, like a path. Let me flip around here. You get the same thing. This one here was actually there. So it was a pathway that walked all the way around. Goes around here. And goes into the entrance. So it's a nice find. Looks interesting, but not uh, unexplainable. Which is more likely it's human done than it's Sasquatch. We got another area up here I want to show you. The toughest part about squatching is you got to be honest. Because there's no use looking for things that aren't squatch. So most people come in this area. There's an X over here. But most people would come into this area and they would see all this stuff and immediately go to Squatch. You gotta slow yourself down. You have to, you have to be the healthy skeptic because there's nobody here who's a healthy skeptic. And you have to use your critical thinking. But I'll show you some stuff that's strange. Where'd that guy come from right there? That's a... It's easily 60 feet long. There's no stump around here. There's no busted trees up top. There's this one here, but that's poplar. Some poplars busted up there, but that's not poplar there. That's uh, balsam by the looks of it. Or lodgepole pine. I think it's lodgepole pine. But I rarely get into forests like this that are, haven't been touched. This is crown land. That's a huge baby. Look at these guys. Just hang in there. So let's see what we're looking at here. This guy has snapped. And he has snapped off of something. That's where I want to go is that direction. But uh, I'm gonna do this later. I'm gonna have a whole day to do this whole perimeter area right through here. I'm gonna head over to Echo Lake right now. Let's talk in a minute. Hey, like there's something weird about this south side of the valley the tree snaps are crazy on this side like they're not I don't think I've seen as many tree snaps just to the road and they always have a context 
The other thing I was thinking about too, the four times I heard wood knocks, it was never a sunny day. It was clouded over, or at least seemed clouded over. One day it was rainy. Uh, the other th uh, day it was uh, so smoky out that it was like dusk. But I want to show you something here. Maybe. I'm not sure yet, but I think this is a print right here. And it's a pretty big print, but I want to get the right angle so you can see what I'm looking at here. Pull that back a bit. There's a big toe right in here, and then there's another one, another one, another one, and another one. It goes like this, and it's about seven inches across. Comes all the way back here to back here, all the way inside. I don't want to read into that now. The drawback is when I pulled some stuff out of here, right here where the toes were right in here. You can see indent. Maybe you can't. You probably can. I'm sorry, you guys. Here. It's a big toe right here. Toe, toe, toe. And then the smaller toes are down there. There's definitely a uh, black bear here. Because uh, what got my brain focus a bit more was I came across older ba uh, black bear pimp prints up here. Now, this is the most promising thing I found for regarding a track, but I'm not even going to say it's a track because I, it's not clear enough for me. This is the kind of stuff I wouldn't show you guys normally, but it's got to be I don't know if it makes it better if I shave it on this side, but that's my foot where the heel is here and that's where the toes go up so it's an extra four inches and that's um so i have a 12 a 12 inch foot so that's 16 inches what that would be and there's a trail that comes up through here so it's older though for sure it's older So, that's why I don't show you prints, because you can't see them that well. But I can see, I can see what I'm looking at. But. So it's no use showing prints like that, because you can't really make it out at home, and it, it doesn't help you guys. So. so I want to put some recorders here, here, and right there. Hard to believe that's blue sky above the smoke. Oh, I'm kind of bagged. So I'm at Echo Lake Resort. So that is where the husband and uh, daughter did the report from. They actually were over in the site over here. And uh, there's some really great trails. If Jennifer, you and Chris, and Mandy, and who else? Uh, Johnny, and Leanne, and anybody else. Well, not anybody else. <laughs> You guys should come up to this spot. This spot is, I think, the ideal place to search for Sasquatches. Um, like I said before, it's, it's kind of interesting because I, um, you know, I've been here a few times, and every time I've been here, someone shared about a Sasquatch sighting. It's kind of weird. Uh, the people both in, uh, um, it's easier for me to keep my eyes closed because that bright light's so bright. In uh, cozy cabins. They had a uh, uh, potluck for everybody that was in the camp. They have about eight cabins, uh, 65 acres in all, I think. 40 on this side of the lake, the north side, and 25 on the other side of the lake. 
and they know the area really good so they've been able to give me back trails up this area that I filmed earlier that <laughs> is just like this oh, it's just insane uh, and you need to be a bit of a mountain goat so I'm glad that uh, Harold uh, helped me with that but uh, I don't know it's sort of frustrating everything here just reeks of squatch everything the past the force uh, the people, the reports people are tell, uh, talking about, uh, people I'm bumping into telling me about what they've experienced here. But again, it's all... It's not tangible. Even me talking right now, you guys are viewing me at home, and it's like, there's nothing solid, and there's not. I mean, I can not I can say there's three wood knocks that happened to me over here. I thought I heard a wood knock on the other side. It's only like nine and most people are going to sleep and the nice thing is you can hear nothing out here you can hear your ringing on your ears and you can your breathing and your heart and the last time i was at a place like this was on galliano island just total quiet so what i did tonight was i put a uh, one of my uh, recorders over into the middle section of echo lake and the only reason why I did that, not necessarily for howls, of course the only kids that are in the campground happen to be right over here. <laughs> really? <laughs> but there's a bonus to have kids. You want playful laugh in the area, uh, as the story goes. They, they like kids' laughter, apparently. So, uh, And who doesn't? But anyway, so I put that audio recorder in the middle of the lake. And the reason why I did that was, where I put it, it it's like a catcher's mitt so where I actually put it was like right on the lake down here and so if there's any wood knocks that are up here in the mountain like I said it's like this or like this this is what it's like any knocks up there that recorder will pick that up so uh, facts 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 and I'm not sure exactly what to do quite yet in regards to negotiating and navigating other than I gotta be true to what I'm doing which is what I've said I'm always gonna do and I'm gonna keep doing that which is basically show you what I'm finding showing you the process showing you the growth showing you the mistakes um, and you know to come out here and have those structures that I filmed they're totally man-made and uh, we have to be fair about that, you guys. We have to be able to, we have to educate ourselves, whether we like it or not. We have to educate ourselves to define whether or not we're looking at something that's made from a Sasquatch compared to things that we think might be made from Sasquatch. And so some of you guys I posted on a couple of different sites there at the question, uh, what was it called? Research question. And I was, does anyone know where the origin of woo started coming in to the Bigfoot community. Remember systems theory? We got a system that's 50 years old in Western culture regarding a topic called Bigfoot or Sasquatches. And we want to build on what came before, but we also want to track back to find out where the ideology started to come from so that we can build on what is solid. We can keep the stuff that, we're, that we have a hypothesis about, I'm not saying to throw any of that out, but what we're really doing is anchoring down and weighing or nailing down what we know is solid. And the bottom line is what we know is solid is there are academics out there that say there is something out there. There are academics out there, some like the late uh, John Bindernagel who passed away last year. Uh, you know, when I got to talk to him, I think the biggest impression he left on me was tracks or facts. There are tracks. Something can leave tracks. And remember, tracks have been around for a long time. And there's lots of stories pre-Bob uh, Gimlin uh, uh, um, film, filming. Uh, so the idea about tracks and people finding tracks, like even again coming here and uh, that old timer who was talking about, you know, he came across tracks and then he actually saw one. And, um, you know, the, the thing about bumping into people, they haven't told anybody. <laughs> there's no way you can get them on a camera. So... <laughs> take some time to woo them over so I might have to come back and revisit it a few times so anyways remember this you guys <laughs> the body language guys Ooh, I'm excited but anyways uh, and tracks are facts now tree structures I'm not sure about tree structures 
I do believe that they use the forest to help negotiate and navigate. How they use the forest to negotiate and navigate, I don't know. The theory is uh, tree snaps, tree leans, uh, hanging trees, upside down trees. Now this is all hypothesis. Uh, the drawback is we don't have any visual evidence of it. In other words, visually we have it recorded or we've seen it personally that any of that's been done by Sasquatches. Uh, on the site over there at Cozy Cabins, when I was talking to Harold, you know, asked him about the structures in the background of his property. He says, oh yeah, those have been there for a long time. A lot of us would be excited about that. Oh, all right, Squatch has been here for a long time. And then he follows up with, that was made by my kids. Uh, they, they would come out and make those structures. And so you can look at those pictures or the filming and you can see that some of that stuff looks pretty solid. But the drawback is a person who knows the people who did it, a dad who knows the son, they've been on the property for over 20 years, knows the area. And he says, those are my kids, they did that. And they're grown up now, I met the daughter tonight, so she seems really nice. Um, so you have to stick with the facts. And uh, when I first got into Bigfoot, you know, all the stuff I was picking up online, these are what you look for and all this kind of stuff, I got sucked right in there, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, the first videos I put up, I think it was up in the, um, uh, Penticton area and the guy who showed it he's a really awesome guy and stuff like that and he didn't know what he was looking at and I certainly didn't know what I looked at was looking at and uh, I think it was called Jack site there was one thing I didn't show on one of the videos even though you know I was really excited I really thought you know this has got to do with squatches but <coughs> everyone can be fooled especially when you're trusting and especially when you go online and especially especially when you come on site you remember you're trusting but you got to be cautious in your trust and you got to be flexible because down the road, you're going to have to eventually say, you know, things that you thought were squatchy aren't squatchy at all. And it's just part of the process. And it's, it helps people. It helps them also relax and fess up, but it also helps them to trust you. And again, if you have a YouTube channel, I mentioned this just a little while ago, you have a big responsibility for people who are watching what you're saying and what you're doing and your claims that you're declaring. And I have a big responsibility to do that as well. Uh, you have the trolls out there. I'm pretty fortunate. I've only had really one kind of uh, person hound me online, I guess, but I've already, you know, opened up a file on them and I deal with the police, so I just open up a file on them. I actually went and talked to the RCMP. Uh, I know the person's location. I'm not saying this as threats or anything, but the bottom line is I find a lot of people are wounded in the community and uh, I don't blame them for being wounded. I've had a pretty uh, terrible life in regards to certain things that have happened to me. Uh, but I have no right to take that out on other people. And I didn't come into uh, looking for Sasquatch. That's the key part. I'm here looking for Sasquatch. I'm not here to join a Bigfoot community. <laughs> a Bigfoot community has evolved because that's what humans do. We put make these systems out of ideologies. And if you're not part of the system, well, of course, the system can't trust you because you're not part of their system. And then in that system, there's all these people who are moved up the ranks and have now got this morals and this ethic area, and it's got this hoaxers area, and it's got this spiritual area, and it's got the supernatural area, it's got the uh, extraterrestrial area. It just goes on and on and on and on. on. Now, I'm not it's not my business any of that stuff's not not got nothing to do with what i'm supposed to be doing which is looking for sasquatch but i got to be actual factual <laughs> and actual factual is facts or tracks and you need to find tracks uh, you can search in a whole area but you need to find tracks you need to get yourself out there at least your inf your inf contact information out there so you can get people to report so you can have a starting point to check out certain areas it's better to have tw 20 30 40 50 other eyes out there uh, and that's usually just people who weren't planning on seeing a squatch, but all of a sudden bumped into one. Again, coming out here. <laughs> well, I've been here counting the first time somebody mentioned that they saw a squatch. Uh, there's that time, and then the first day I was here, the second day I was here, the third day I was here. <laughs> it's four. Four. And the one guy talking about a vocal that he heard. So that's five. So... Uh, the area totally just reeks. Honestly, if you were just Joe Blow Squatchy coming on, a YouTube guy, watching Bigfoot, looking at structures, all that kind of stuff, you walk into this area, squatchy to the tent. And I'm not kidding you guys, it's totally squatchy. Prehistoric, ooey, spooky, all that kind of stuff. But absolutely gorgeous area, beautiful area. Can't hear anything now. And it's only like 9.30, or quarter to 10 now, I think. So, and I'll be up at 2, about from 12 to about 3. 
and I want to listen for wood knocks too because where I'm located on the lake is another bowl area where if there's any knocks that are across the lake it'll come right across the lake and I'll be able to hear them. It is a really unique uh, uh, geography in the area. Again it's just like this and then the lake's right in the middle and it just goes on like this. So what's really cool about that is everything echoes off that plateau of that lake. Sound carries on water. The other nice thing about put, putting my uh, audio up to uh, in the middle uh, part of this elongated lake is so that uh, I can be able to hear the difference between the activity at Cozy Cabin on that particular receiver and also down here, or not down here, down here uh, at the other side of the lake where the avalanche area is. Um, on uh, as far as talking goes, kids goes, noise goes, how it get carries through the lake, and that'll give me an idea of the, the uh, uh, frequent, not frequency, but the dead 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 start to the D. Can't remember what it is. <laughs> Decibels. That's it. Uh, carry across the lake. That will give me a measurement there too. So, getting back to the concepts, facts, tracks, measurements. Uh, weather, uh, environment, um, uh, rhythms, fall, spring, summer, winter, uh, cycles, you want to look for cycles, you want to look for patterns, you want to look for, uh, you know, uh, again, there's cattle up here that are free ranging up here in Crown Land. Where do they go at in the morning? Or where do they go at night? They all come off the mountain at night time. And if you remember the report that came in on um, uh, Thomas Steenberg shared it with me when he was the one who investigated the one at, oh, it's a major park in Alberta, Southern Alberta. Justin was just there. He just posted a video about hanging out there. Okay, can't remember that brain fart. I'll type it right here. Uh, before that big foot happened, the people who reported it, there was quite a group of them, uh, was the... The deer and the elk hang out all the time, and the bear around the camp all the time. Like there's lots of them. And in that vi video interview I did with Thomas, I showed you kind of pictures of oh, I just about had it. <laughs> all the deer that are right there, and all of a sudden the deer all disappear. Now deer can usually detect when there's predator in the area, and cows can predict when there's a predator in the area. Now I know the cows would actually migrate from the top down off the mountain down into uh, the valley a bit more and that's okay but the interesting thing is that if there's a sense of a predator in an area where they're going to negotiate to is the farthest safest area away from the predator so that gives you a bit of a hint of which direction to go check if there's squatches in the area so I've heard uh, vocals I've got two reports vocals going on here I heard one guy here who I talked to today that's heard vocals I've got an old timer who says he found a foot here with uh, not a foot but a footprint a footprints uh, and uh, seen a Sasquatch um, I've got uh, three knocks that I personally heard um, a fourth one perhaps over on this other side uh, I've had somebody show me things that look like structures that unfortunately later found out it wasn't structures at all, but they sure look like structures. All this stuff is important for education and learning about what I'm looking for. Um, I've got audio up. I might have an audio of the dog. There's a dog that's way down the valley, and everyone seems to know this dog, which is a very loud barking dog. And I'm not too sure, but I might have vocals. I'm not saying I do yet. Uh, but I might have vocals of the dog barking and then behind it you can hear this howl and it's it's noticeable it's not like hidden that's what's so unique about this valley is it really does travel so okay thanks I'll talk to you guys tomorrow and the game plan is to go all along the rim of the forest that I showed you the other day or uh, today and it'll It'll be good. It'll be a good time. <laughs> it's a great place for squatching for sure. <laughs> okay, talk to you in a bit.